What is up everyone? It is Caleb from Caleb Video Maker 2. This video is going to introduce you to the concept of queries. So we're going to run a couple of queries in SQL Server. Now we haven't really done a whole lot of on-screen content, so we're going to start kind of slow. But be patient because we are going to speed up as we go. So I'm not going to bore you for the rest of this entire series if you are not a complete beginner. <laughs> now I did want to mention to you guys, this is video number 23. And I decided starting with video number 23, I am going to do a competition between SQL Server, MySQL, and Oracle. You know, just to see which series you guys like the most. So if you like SQL Server, be sure to click like and view all of the rest of the series because I'm going to add up all those points and see which one gets the, the most points. <laughs> and the winner is going to get 50 extra videos for the series. So I ain't going to waste your time anymore because it's already been like a minute. So let's connect to our database. Now, when you first connect, all this crap's over here. We're, we're not going to worry about that right now. What we want to do is click New Query. This is where we put all of the commands that we want to tell the database. For example, we can create a database using the create command followed by database, and then we can give it a name. And then to execute that, we just press F5. Now we can go over here and look at our databases, and boom, look at that. We got a subscribe database. But the focus of this video is not creating databases. I actually want to talk to you about expressions. An expression is essentially anything that can be evaluated by SQL Server. What do I mean by evaluated? Well, remember back to math class, you'd have, you know, these problems and they'd be super hard, like 5 plus 5, and you had to evaluate those to an answer. So you could say 5 plus 5 is an expression. So we can have SQL Server evaluate expressions for us. The way we do that is use the SELECT keyword and then we give it an expression. 5 plus 5. Now the semicolon at the end of these is actually optional. Although I am going to try to use it because it's recommended and if you have two SELECT statements in here, for example SELECT 5 plus 6, you can run both of those at the same time. This is known as a delimiter, and it tells SQL Server that there's going to be another command after this one. But if there is not a command after this one, for example, let's just say we had this, you do not need it. You can put it, so this would work, but it's optional. If you have two statements and you want to run them both at the same time, it is required. So essentially, the last semicolon is optional, but as good practice, you should probably put it in there. <laughs> All right, but I'm getting off topic. Let's go back to queries. <laughs> All right, so let's run both of these. So press F5, and you can see the first one returns 10, and the second one returns 11. And you can see here, I actually did not put a space after the five here. That's because SQL is not white space sensitive. So what is white space? White space includes spaces, it includes tabs, and new lines. So you can see I just put a space, tab, and a new line, and when I run this thing, it's going to work just the way that it did before. Now there are some limitations to this. For example, we can't put white space between a keyword. For example, when we do that, it's no longer a keyword. Additionally, when we are working with string data, for example, if we have that, if we put a space here, that's actually a different string. And I'll show you that because we can actually put a string inside of a select to return it to us. So this here can actually be returned back to us. So we can tell the database, hey, we want you to give us this string back. So to do that, all we have to do is say select followed by that string. So this is a string, and a string is just a collection of characters. Each one of these is a character and it's surrounded by single quotes. So let's run this, and you can see it returns that string. Now what I was saying about white space is that when we delete this white space here and then run it again, you can see that it returns the same thing that's put here. So the white space inside of these quotes makes a difference, but the white space here makes no difference. You can see that the result is exactly the same. One other thing that I wanted to mention in this video is comments. A comment is something we can put there for our use, but SQL Server just ignores it when it runs the query. To put a comment, you put two minus signs, and then you can put whatever you want. 
So you can see here, this is a different color and SQL Server is actually going to ignore it. So if I execute this, you can see it makes no difference. Now these two minus signs, this is an example of a single line comment. What that means is when we go down to the next line, we are no longer in a comment anymore. And you can tell because it's a different color. So down on this line, we can put other commands. And I'm just gonna add that semicolon there to get into my good practice. <laughs> the other type of comment though is a multi-line comment. And the way you do that is a forward slash, asterisk, asterisk, forward slash. And then in between these two asterisks, that's hard to say, <laughs> you can put whatever you want. And now you can see this entire section is ignored by SQL Server. Now you don't have to put these on multiple lines. For example, this is all on one line, but it still works as a comment. So yeah, that's a pretty good rough introduction to queries. Now we never dived into all of the keywords and everything you can do. That's just because there's too much to cover in one video. <laughs> I'm already feeling a bit scatterbrained because I'm trying to explain so much and da. But essentially everything's going to piece together as we learn more about SQL Server. But for now, just know that you can use the select statement to have the database give us back some data. But what we need to know now is how do we get data from tables? And that actually requires another keyword known as from and we will talk about that in upcoming videos so thanks guys be sure to click subscribe and like this video and i will see you in the next video